Welcome to EC Elimu, Learning Simplified, and welcome to this lesson. In the previous lesson, we have discussed rectilinear propagation of light and the reflection on plane surfaces. And we realized that the light which is traveling in a straight line, when it interacts with a plane, a smooth surface, it bounces back. Now in this lesson, we are going to discuss the application of plane mirrors especially when we have mirrors at an angle. My name is Albert. I hope you will enjoy the lesson. By the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to describe how a periscope uses the idea of plane mirrors, especially in the reflection on plane mirrors in its working, and then explain how some of the instruments we use in physics laboratory uses the idea of plane mirrors to reduce parallax error, especially when we are reading the scale. And then finally, explain how a kaleidoscope works. So the first application of plane mirrors is in the working of a periscope. And a periscope is an instrument which is used to view objects over obstacles. So let's say we have our obstacle like that. Let's say this is a hill. And this hill is in this case our obstacle. And now remember this obstacle or a hill is opaque and you cannot see through it. So if we have an eye at this point here, let's say we have an eye there. This is the eye of a person. And they want to observe an object which is at this point of this hill and then this point here this is our object so for this person to see that object then it means as we said for you to see light must travel from the object to your eyes so it means light must travel in a straight line from the object to that eye like that and so if this person has to see it then this uh obstacle or this hill must be transparent so if it's not transparent then it means these rays cannot travel over that obstacle like that then we need another way in which we can divert or con control those rays to reach the eye of that person and then the only instrument which can do that is a periscope so a periscope contains two mirrors which are positioned at an angle of 45 degrees to each other and then these mirrors now they are positioned in a way that rays from the object will be reflected to the first mirror then the first mirror will reflect the ray to the second mirror at an angle of 45 degrees and then the angle or the, the second mirror now will reflect the light to the eye so if we can sketch the diagram of um, a periscope then you need a hollow tube this hollow tube must be forming 90 degrees at the corners so if you have that part as your upper part of the hollow tube then now here you need the second part like that then you need this one also like that then what i'm saying here it should be 90 degrees at these corners then at the bottom here it also moves to the eye and at 90 degrees like that also here at 90 degrees like that so this one should be 90 degrees and now you need two mirrors which are at 45 degrees to each other so you have one mirror there then the other mirror down there like that and then these mirrors as we have said this mirror one this mirror two now the reflecting surface should face each other like this so this is the painted part reflecting surface is on the inner part then here we have 45 degrees 45 degrees remember this triangle 45 plus 45 plus 90 is 180 is also 45 degrees 45 degrees now if we have a ray from the tip of the object this ray will come in a straight line to the first mirror like that let me draw it 
better remember to use a ruler so it will come to the uh, first mirror like that then when it hits the first mirror like that the first mirror remember the angle of incidence will be 45 angle of reflection will also be 45 so it will turn by an angle of 90 degrees and if it turns at an angle of 90 degrees then it will it will get reflected to the bottom part of this uh, mirror like that so this one will be reflected like this from the first mirror to the second mirror like that now when it reaches this part here the angle of incidence will also be 45 then angle of reflection 45 then it will get now reflected with the eye like that then the second uh, ray from the uh, tip or the, the from the tail of this object will also move to the mirror in a straight line like that then it will hit at an angle of 45 get reflected uh, with the angle of reflection of 45 therefore it will turn at 90 the second mirror like that so here it will also move remember here now it has turned 90 45 45 then now if it hits this second mirror at an angle of 45 then angle of reflection 45 then it will move to the eye at an angle of 90 like that and now this person now the rays from the object has reached the, the eyes of this person but now this person will see as if this image was coming from behind uh, this second mirror like that so this person will see as if the object or the image is seen is just coming from behind uh, this second mirror but remember when you are drawing this the object and the image must be in the same line like this it must be in the same line like that so the person will see as if the image is seeing is behind uh, the second mirror and the same image is same distance uh, behind the obstacle like the object which it was uh, or, uh, like that of the object behind the obstacle so this is now our image now another thing that you should notice here is that the image is of the same size as that of the object as you can see only rays that have traveled and if it can change then it will depend on the ratio of your mirrors and then also another thing that you should note here is that the image is upright that is the most important thing here so periscopes they form upright images and another thing is that this image is virtual virtual means it cannot be formed on the screen it's a virtual image the rays which are forming it are not real so this is what we call virtual rays these are virtual rays rays which are not real then this periscope now is mostly used by submarines to observe uh, incoming ships especially those of enemies and another object which is moving on top of water and then now this uh, the submarine uh, periscopes most of the time we don't use a plain mirror remember plain mirrors are made when you paint the back part of uh, the glass surface so we don't use plain mirrors because the plain mirrors they get easily damaged the plain mirror mirrors can get easily damaged so we use what we call prism we are going to discuss prism telescopes where we are going to use the idea of total internal reflection so this rays will be turning at an angle of 45 but it's not because of reflection using plain mirrors but total internal reflection an idea we will discuss in form 3 on refraction then if you have a thick mirror thick mirrors produce multiple images if you have a thick mirror thick mirrors always produce multiple images and if you have multiple images remember what we said if you have two or more images on the same uh, point then it means it will be blurred the image will be blurred 
and large. So there are no lateral inversion with the prisms. Remember, in this case, the left will look like right and right will look like left. That's what we call lateral inversion. But for uh, prisms, there is no lateral inversion. So when we are going to discuss diffraction, we will discuss uh, how periscopes can be used to make periscopes. Uh, the, the prisms can be used to make periscopes. And we're going to see that the, prism, the periscopes made from prisms are good or better than those of plane mirrors because in the plane mirrors, the silver part, the paint that we paint on the silver part, back part of the mirror can fade off. And if it fades off, it means we will not have clear images. Then some mirrors, uh, we use thick glass. So thick glass, sometimes they give multiple images. And then finally, there's no lateral inversion in prism. So it means for mirrors, we have lateral inversion where left looks like light and right looks like left. So another application of plane mirrors is that they are used behind the pointers of instruments like voltimeters and ammeters, which have a pointer and a scale. Now, the use of these mirrors is that when you are viewing or reading the scale or the position of the pointer, you should be only be seeing the pointer but no image of the pointer. So if you view from an angle, then it means you will be seeing both the image of the pointer and the pointer itself. So if you see the image and the pointer, then it means your reading is not correct because you have not viewed perpendicularly. Now, if you see both image and the pointer, it means you have made what we call a parallax error when you are viewing from an angle. Now, then you should adjust your sight or your eye properly until you only see the pointer without its image. So in that case, these uh, mirrors are going to help us to reduce what we call parallax error. Since if there's a parallax error, you will just see the image and the pointer. If you see the two, then it means your eye position is wrong. But if you only see the pointer, no image of the pointer, then it means you are reading is correct and there's no parallax error. So that marks the end of our lesson today and the end of our topic, rectilinear propagation of light. In the next topic, we will discuss electrostatics.